Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Mishan Sharma and you are listening to Bitscast. On this episode, I have Priya Shivastav. He is currently pursuing computer science from Bitscoa and he's also the ex-chief cordy of DevSoc Bitscoa. And in this episode, we talk about his journey of learning computer science. He is currently a part of a startup which is all about algorithmic trading and we talk about, uh, you know, learning development, software development and how he uh, learned backend development and his journey of learning all these skills and what were the challenges he faced and a lot of uh, you know other things we talked about if uh, computer science degree is useful or not some other things uh, related to uh, back end development and uh, you know microservices and all uh, this is a great episode for all of you if you want to learn to code and uh, want to think about what it takes to become a back end developer and uh, yeah this was a great episode make sure that you watch till the very end subscribe to the channel if you haven't already guys like this video and now let's jump into the episode Hello Priyash, thank you so much for joining me here for this podcast episode. I'm uh, really excited to talk to you. How are you doing there? Uh, I'm doing fine, Ashan. Thank you for having me on the podcast episode. How is your life right now in the, you know, work from home era? Uh, you, I am pretty sure you're very aware of that. So as a developer, we don't face much issues. So that that's the one problem of being a CS engineer is that you can work from anywhere. So you have no holidays. Other yeah. people are just watching Netflix and chilling. And we are doing. Can yeah. I hear your audio? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So That's let's actually start uh, with what your journey has been like. Tell me something about that. How did you, you know, when you came into Bits Goa, what was your experience like, and how did you start to learn web development and especially backend development? Tell me a little about that. Yeah. So basically, what happened was uh, initially when I came to Bits Goa uh, as is not very well known i actually watched quite a few bollywood movies so i was expecting you know we'll play guitar go to the gym you know do the standard current johar movie stuff but yeah. then what happened was that i met uh, tanmay the second day i came to campus mm-hmm. and he told me about uh, developer society right which was then known as mac right yeah. so then he asked me can you join it okay so mm. i gave an induction and i don't think it was very good but still uh, tanma was impressed by my object oriented programming concepts so he said yeah sure come along right did you have uh, any and, prior uh, experience to uh, coding before coming to the campus uh, yeah i had done python in 11th and 12th and i had a sufficiently good project with okay. and all those components mm-hmm. so i would say like but i was not a developer i i knew how to write code but writing code and being a developer are two different things right Oh, how so? Ah, uh, see, basically, ah, uh, I will uh, talk about this. So, basically, what the issue is, writing code is you understand a close statement, right? Like, for example, let's say sort a list of five numbers. Okay, you know, yeah. okay, there are five algorithms. I can write a code for this. Done. Being a developer is like, you know, firstly, you need to understand the tech stacks, right? Second, you need to understand the components that go into building the system. So, for example, when I came in, right? so uh then uh, showed me android studio right and i did not understand even the most basic components how they worked how they interacted i just knew you know what i was writing was valid code but i didn't know how it worked behind the scenes how it un- understood so like you can say like you know uh, development is a subset of code right obviously so that's why it's a more specialized this thing where you know you focus more on understanding what you have to accomplish rather than how you have to accomplish it mm mm-hmm. and how, how did your how, how how did you progress into development uh, in the first year second year and now third year uh, so basically uh, what happened was you know i was almost uh, on the verge of leaving uh, mac that time because i was getting very bad grades and so on uh, however i uh, somehow stuck on and uh, in the uh, in the winters tanmay gave me a very good project so from that project you know uh, it was not a very big project but i understood you know uh, basically how to work with people and basic android development very basic mostly i did not understand what i was writing at that point in time i just wrote it with the faith that yeah it will work right there were many yeah. errors and you know like uh, many of my colleagues helped me solve it a lot especially rajat he helped me a lot you know like i used to submit really buggy web development code back then 
and okay. somehow you know he he assumed that i did so because i might have made a mistake but i actually did not know what i was doing back then right yeah so i uh, started doing that and uh, then what happened was in uh, 2 1 uh, uh, aditya dwevi was a senior of mine he approached me to uh, be the lead back end developer for a startup uh, sensor right so okay then what happened was back then i did not actually know back end development i just knew python right so yeah. i just told him yeah i know back end development not an issue i mm. thought it won't be that hard but then yeah. when we started getting into it it uh, suddenly got out of hand right mm. however like you know uh, even there like people quite few of my seniors help me out there you know with the understanding the concept so the thing was the person who used to write front end he was our senior obviously so he had worked in some startups before he knew how back end worked but he knew that in js right okay so he used to try to explain me the concepts right and i used to try to implement it in python so that mm-hmm. is the advantage i think i had over other people in so learning a python framework for back end i was learning you know the concept behind back end like what are routes what are resources because that person mm-hmm. did not know JS, uh, uh, python and i did not know js you were using right? django or flask we were using flask at that time we had initially thought of using django but then i realized i was very under equipped for using django at that time okay as a first this thing yeah. since it was only a back end framework so it didn't make sense you know and the front end was written in react so it didn't really make sense to uh, get through this stuff yeah yeah it's actually funny that you mentioned uh, tanmay uh, deksha because he was actually uh, when, when we were uh, inducting first year rights into the club you know you might remember i was actually yeah, sitting yeah. there I trying to get like, a prank <laughs> on you he came, he came and, as a first and i, and I was the first year i was like when does ishan realize <laughs> exactly i had no idea that he was fourth year right he was the ex cody of devsoc and he was just sitting there and i thought he was a first year and i was trying to grade him out of 5 and i was even like yeah he's like 2 out of 5 and then later i got to know that he's the ex cody and i had oh my god who he <laughs> it must have been a really fun experience yeah 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 it was like totally i had no idea that he was who he is and, and then after that obviously we had a great talk for like half an hour and then we became great friends and we, yeah, you know, we still talk it was when you had just started your podcast right at that time yeah 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 you wanted exactly yeah. mm mm-hmm. great so what would be your advice for people that you know start that you know want to start into back end development first of all i think that back end development is a little bit harder something that is difficult to get into versus front end development mm-hmm. because obviously you have html and css so what is uh, your standpoint in that uh yeah it is harder to you know uh, get into back end development for sure because you know html uh appears to be like you know a uh, very uh, it shows off that it is a very simple language to learn and so on right but yeah. when you go one notch up just one notch up then you realize that you know uh, html css it's it's very easy to make okesh front ends right it's very easy to make uh, almost good front ends but making scalable and great front ends i think is uh, not easy at all i would say, you know put back end development between those two things That's elaborate on that a little bit more yeah can elaborate on that bit more uh, so basically uh, you know back end development right now what we talk about back end development basically whenever we refer to that we mean like building rest apis okay yeah so rest apis are basically nothing you know but they are like the language of the internet so you know like your server is written in a different uh, method right uh different environment different system everything right and your client your computer that's using the browser correct mm-hmm. is written in a totally different thing right yeah so the whole point of rest is you know to just do a state transfer and like people okay. who have done uh, you know some theoretical uh, computer science they will know what state transfer is but basically it just transmits data in a format that both sides can understand so that is where you know like uh, it becomes a quite simple concept after a point in time and making front ends will generally be a faster process in, uh, for the beginner right however like in terms of pay in terms of logic in terms of you know thinking capacity uh, back end will give you more per capita is what i feel of how can invest in yeah 
and did you try to learn front end as well like being like a full stack developer is the uh, end dream yeah, of yeah. Web developer so actually when i began uh, i did not begin with back end development obviously so in the okay. summer vacation you are uh, you must remember that we have our uh, websites right for our fest college fest so yeah. back then we had an app we didn't have a website as part of mobile app, app club but we had an admin interface a very basic admin interface for people to you know log in and do some stuff so that's when i yeah. started with you know like basic html javascript and so on so and after that um, in two two um, rudula ma'am who is our you know entrepreneurship teacher gave me a yeah. wonderful opportunity to work for a cancer aid startup so there we you know i handled at least out of 50 55% of the whole team's tasks so that play, that was where you know i worked with rajat and got into view js and everything like that mm-hmm. great and so what would be your advice for people that are looking for internships what would that be uh yes so for people who are looking for internships i would you know uh, first uh, i would be honest with myself as to what the goal of my internship is right there are a couple of goals obviously the first and uh, foremost goals that people in my year have is to get a pre placement offer right another yeah. one is you know uh, to get some money over the summers the and another one is to get you know some uh, experience that would not be possible on an individual level right okay. so we have to be honest with ourselves what which one of these three is our aim right if you yeah. are looking for a, a pre placement offers from companies right i would uh, strongly suggest you know you the only aspect of development that you look at should be system design if you are looking for a pre placement offer at least for now okay right mm-hmm. because system design is something that is fundamental that does not depend on your tech stack and you know that gauges a lot of things uh, so what is system design can you tell yeah. that for the audience yeah so that is a good question i think it's a very good question so uh, basically uh, the premise is you know real life problems are very open ended correct so yeah. uh, basically let's say a very very real life problem is let's say uh, i am the person who came up with the idea for the uber app okay okay very ba- basic idea right so uh, yeah. you know then the whole point becomes how to implement it correct and as far as the computer science problem goes it is a pretty ambiguous statement correct because yeah. in computer science we used to you know formal definitions and everything and everything so it is a pretty ambiguous statement when i said design something like uber correct so you know mm-hmm. you need to understand what the core offering of your product will be or your software that you are building correct then yeah. you will use it right then okay. what sort of uh, you know trade uh, options you have so basically mm-hmm. if you look at very uh, you know good in uh, system design tips we use videos and all those on the internet you will realize that the whole premise lies behind identifying as many options as you have and identifying trade offs between them right so okay. uh, let's say for example uh, you know if uh, i am a system designer okay then the first question yeah. very basic question i have is what sort of database to choose right so hmm. there are two problems that will arise here one i might not know the different types of databases correct which yeah. is a very unforgiving thing if it happens to you in an interview right mm-hmm. another thing that might happen is i might not understand the type of data i'm dealing with and which database will be good for that so these sort of questions you know it's it's not like a junior developer needs to know these because a junior yeah. developer in a company is just given you know class specifications of java python whatever and you just have to develop those classes with their unit tests and submit them correct okay but the mm-hmm. reason companies case these things is you know so that yeah uh, they need to know na like if you are ever of the level to go to a senior developer or not right yeah mm-hmm. so system design is the main thing that distinguishes system design system architecture is the main thing that distinguishes you know uh, quick growth in your uh, company from uh, normal slow growth is what i would say okay yeah and now coming back to the question that i had the for main internship question yeah so yeah. then if, if if your aim is to get a certain amount of money for a certain effort then i would definitely suggest that uh, gsoc has the best return on investment possible for a 
summer internship uh, exactly. from what i have analyzed yeah. various options so google mm-hmm. summer of code is like a program you know where you contribute to open source uh, organizations so basically yeah. there's some sort of code right which cannot be owned by any company any individual because it requires the community's effort to maintain it and there is no economic incentive as well in doing so in owning mm-hmm. that code like let's say for a web server software right so no yeah. one will buy a web server software from you they might buy a web server hardware they might buy you know an internet connection and so on but no one wants this to buy the sort of software so that's the reason these sort of softwares are open source and they have a very high quality of code written there right so it is a great okay. learning experience as well but in, even in terms of you know return on investment is the best return on investment at an undergraduate level that i have seen from all the options. did you try for gsoc uh i did not uh, try to go and uh, go for it this year because i ha- already had an internship but okay. uh, had i not had that internship i would have definitely uh, given a proposal mm-hmm. great bro so uh, let's actually talk about entrepreneurship and starting up yeah definitely uh, what is your experience with that and uh, what, what do you think like i think that a lot of developers think that they can uh, if they can build the software then they can start a company with that and so i think that that's not always true what do you think about that uh, in my opinion i think you go in the right direction when you say that's not always true see a great entrepreneur uh, has to have only one thing he need not be a great developer the thing is whatever his company needs he should be able to provide in the early yeah. stages right so yeah. if you are a good developer and you don't want to waste uh, you know like the only advantage of being a good developer is you might not have to you know spend some of your startup's equity on getting a technical co-founder right okay. but apart from that there is uh, no such advantage like that you face hmm. right the only thing is that you know if you're a developer you might be open to certain new options okay so let's say for example postman 60 million dollar company from from one of betsians right if you are yeah. not a developer you don't even realize the scope of the problem correct yeah. how big a problem back end testing is right so okay. it does open up avenues for you as does every other expertise but mm. uh, yeah like development is one third of the task i would say in a startup the other thing is you know uh, how well you market like how you try to do right uh, exactly. congrats on the two trending posts in a week on yeah. linkedin <laughs> so marketing is one uh, thing one aspect of it right so the yeah. thing is you know if you build it people won't come on their own right yeah. that is i think both of us can agree on that so you mm-hmm. have to attract people to your product so someone has to be there who can you know can handle all the other two thirds of this problem right but yes yeah. the key differentiator uh, between a good company and a, you know average company is the quality of product they offer and so on that is 100% true but uh, most of the times good developers are not good entrepreneurs i would say mm-hmm. at least in 50% plus of the cases mm-hmm. because yeah okay so I, yeah uh, another question for you is that i i see a lot of people that want to you know become software developers and engineers they they try to learn too much code and and they are not learning microservices like amazon aws and you know google cloud platform and all uh, these microservices that a lot of people use once uh, they go into okay. companies uh, yeah if you don't mind I'd like to throw in a correction so microservice is not this thing so that what you are referring to is a cloud platform so okay. microservices yeah. is basically like an architectural pattern right hmm. and uh, basically yeah but i understand the premise of the problem you are posting so hmm. it is true that you know like uh, since my current job uh, allows me to work as teach you know uh, code to uh, people who do not come from cs backgrounds i can yeah. surely tell you this that from the you know uh, feedback we have received right mm-hmm. it is true that you know quite a few of the people are not able to transition between the tech stacks because they don't understand yes one the scalability of the problem as you pointed out the cloud orders and you know the newer technologies that yeah. can come into market and another thing that they don't understand is the theoretical concept because mm-hmm. theoretical computer science is important irrespective of whatever uh, people say on the internet like just okay. knowing how to use a programming language does not make you a software developer for sure mm-hmm. okay and and do you think that uh, 
what is taught in the college like to you uh, in a cs degree the courses that are taught to you are they are they really helping out uh, earlier i used to think no right however yeah. as i progressed onwards as you know things started getting tied up together i did realize that surprisingly like the, it is very surprisingly useful whatever is taught to you in a cs degree if you are going for okay. a core development job in core cs right mm-hmm. then like in a core computer science company uh, then these things are important obviously like not everyone goes in a core computer science company as a software developer people go to you know e-commerce platforms and so on right yeah so like let's say mentra for example or let's say someone goes in a consultancy company as a software developer so these mm-hmm. things don't come into play that much there but like uh, as you said we are uh, we have a 14 set course right for our computer science from yeah. that i find eight are very useful for example okay. database management system is very useful object yeah. oriented programming is very very useful exactly yeah. maths data structures basic computer programming operating systems mm-hmm. networks all these things i find that you know people bitch about them a lot that yeah they're teaching us old outdated concepts and all but the concept yeah. itself is very mind boggling and it's uh, you know real life applications are there so the only difference i feel is you know people are not able to tie it up to the real life thing that is the only thing i mm-hmm. feel okay yeah this is something really interesting because a lot of people just you know say that college degree for cs is not worth it you can learn cs without even going to the college and so this is this was different for me i think uh, yeah 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 i i don't uh, uh, deny the fact that a college degree is required for a cs job if you yeah. know these theoretical concepts then it's okay as i said right cs has 12 to 13 things that it is built on top of so yeah as long as you understand the pillars on which you have your air castle then you can build a higher castle there is no issue in that the only thing mm-hmm. is you know uh, youtube uh, like people who just learn programming from youtube don't get uh, uh, you know uh, a job very quickly at least from the high level recruiters that's what i feel okay. like there will be people who will put up video that i studied from this book this book for 14 days and got a job but the percentage yeah. is so low that it is not worth taking the risk is what i feel okay mm-hmm. Okay, let's actually talk about backend and what do you think uh, the developer journey should be uh, for learning backend development for people so that are starting out. So I think out. for learning backend development, the best way is to do one project, right, with one yeah. single front end in two mm-hmm. different frameworks simultaneously, right? Okay. So what I feel is when you are using two things that have totally different syntax, right? absolutely yeah. no relation in the syntax but achieve the same purpose right then you mm-hmm. will understand the concepts very very well so like the whole concept of rest api is based on uh, route resource and method right so route yeah. is which url you are calling resource is what should be triggered when that url is called and method mm-hmm. is you know what sort of what sort of operation you are trying to perform like are you trying to yeah. get some data post new data update the old data delete the old data so these sort of things so i would suggest uh, the first thing i would suggest is you know making a crud that is a create read update delete application either on android yeah. or on web using mm-hmm. express and flask simultaneously the reason why i okay. don't recommend django to any beginners mm-hmm. or any laravel frameworks like that to the beginners is mm-hmm. because you know beginners need to understand the flexibility right okay so flask is very very flexible everything is plug and play what you need you need to install right so yeah. if you get everything prepackaged as one right one you get intimidated because it will be a very advanced software right mm-hmm. and two it will be like it will be very restrictive as a learning environment as okay. a production environment django is i think i would say top 3 top 3 to 2 mm-hmm. but you know for a learning environment i won't say so okay so like if you use flask in this thing then yeah. uh, you know uh, you have the advantage that you know you can get the concept behind it see if mm-hmm. you understand the concept behind back end development like uh, when i say back end development i said again i'm res- referring only to restful api development then yeah. you will see that you no know, there is a very uh, simple this thing like premise that has to offer and mm-hmm. you have to gauge the opportunity that is there so like 
if you say like i uh, use django okay django comes with built in mysql integration okay okay so let us say i want to try out my backend with a another database apart from mysql okay yeah then i have to first unplug what has been built by default and then put a new one okay which is okay. I, i i feel like it looks trivial but it is mm-hmm. not as trivial in real life okay so that that is why i feel you know like this is the best approach i feel if you're learning rest api development in backend then yeah. have two frameworks from different languages right mm-hmm. one language you know one which you don't right okay so that when you watch the tutorials of the one you don't and so on you will be able to link it to the one that you do automatically right if you get the concept correct so let's okay. say i have yeah. express and flask js i just open mm-hmm. the documentation of flask but i watch express js tutorials and make the backend right and if i'm okay. able to translate yeah. that to uh, flask with just the documentation that means i understand it so this mm-hmm. is the now like this is a very weird suggestion obviously but there's a statistical reasoning so as i said uh, my current and my current job uh, i work at a company you know that is like a university alternative itself right okay yeah so this is uh, so when uh, people get recruited from there this is the most uh, major uh, feedback uh, people have is we are not taking anyone in back end development from your course the reason being uh, people are uh, not prepared to switch frameworks at all right okay Mm-hmm. that's what i said right framework should not become a shackle for you it should become an enabler so like yeah. the moment you see that start to happen then stop using that framework switch to a different one and so on okay mm-hmm. great 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 and and uh, what are your future plans right now once the corona pandemic ends hopefully soon <laughs> so yeah so we are working on a very cool product for startups right now so it's basically you know uh, the premise is uh, to how to help startups uh, and uh, you know attract investor attention because this is a problem i think you have seen as well uh, you know that uh, quite a few times what happens is startups somehow manage to get you know cold calls cold emails from an investor right and yeah. he asks them to send their pitch deck correct so a pitch mm-hmm. deck is not engaging enough right so yeah. this problem statement so actually uh, put out from our campus i think you might be aware of this mail as well so basically mm-hmm. uh, what it is is you know a different new age platform which is based on you know uh, video audio text like you see that right like instead of writing a blog a podcast is more engaging for the user because it requires less cognitive load right yeah. so similarly we are trying to do that uh, so we are making the new version of uh, like pitch deck 2.0 you can say okay for startups that's mm-hmm. what we are working for right now so hopefully uh, by the end of the pandemic you know all the startups who have lost their term sheet their funding we yeah. can roll it out to them very quickly and hopefully they can you know everyone is you know getting some good amount of funding from their higher engagement of investors and apart from that yeah i'm uh, currently working on a new research paper on oh. uh, this thing on uh, big data transmission mm-hmm. so and you also did a research paper get... with tanmay yeah 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 mm-hmm. they had a research paper with uh, tanmay mrudula ma'am and rajat and hari ram so mm-hmm. that was actually based off of the learnings we took from the work we did under mrudula ma'am for 6 months uh, in that startup right so we had a lot of learning and uh, you know we wanted to present it to them to the world as a prototype format so i feel like it's one of the more practical research papers it might not have added as much to the academia literature but it you know uh, for a person who's trying to build a, starting this thing it is a scientific way to you know how to build uh, something a solution for a problem that we saw mm, yeah so it, it was basically based around uh, if time permits it was basically uh, based around the fact that you know tb tuberculosis right it requires a lot of uh, management from the mm, yeah. uh, doctor hospital government and so on right because it's a yes. long term disease and uh, mm. rudula ma'am has had family history of tb right so mm. she came up with the idea for this paper that we take up the learnings that we got from our uh, you know cancer aid startup that we worked yeah. for and we mm. apply it you know in a research environment which was a very new thing you know 
so basically all the things all the back end things i'm talking about right now right i had yeah. to provide uh, statistical benchmarks for each of my choice right so okay. even though i had to use flask back then because that was the easiest fix in those one, 10 20 days that we had for delivering the product but mm-hmm. uh, you know like i had to benchmark and show why i chose what i chose right so like okay. we had why we chose aws instead of gcp and so on many things yeah. so that was a really nice you know experience i think like that will help me later on when i do my system design or when i do my software development yeah all right and so would you be setting for placements uh that is not in my original plan but okay. uh, if things don't go according to plan then obviously then i will not have any choice but that is not okay. my first uh, top 3 preferences mm-hmm. all right priyesh thanks a lot for joining me here for this podcast interview yeah, yeah. Uh, i hope the audience will learn a lot from it yeah thank you uh, thank you for right, having thanks me thanks a lot podcast. All right, everyone. That was uh, the episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, do let me know uh, in the comment section below. And also, thank you so much for watching till the very end. Uh, you guys are so amazing. Thank you so much. If you can go to Apple Podcast and give us a rating of five stars and uh, review the podcast, that would just mean the world to me. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.